I've always thought that it would be nice to have a game which changes from day to night depending on the time in the real world. You can actually do that pretty easily by using the time class in Godot, and even though it might seem a bit overwhelming at first, we can simplify it quite a lot. Now, there are three types of methods from this class. Methods that can get the time, methods that convert the time, and also some utility methods. So let's say that I wanted to get the time. For that, I have to ask myself three questions. First of all, how much information do I actually need? Do I want to only get the date, do I only want to get the time, or do I want to get both date and time? The second question is, do I want to get the local time? If yes, then I'll simply get the local time. If not, then maybe I want to get UTC, which is the coordinated universal time, which basically is just the time independent of time zone. The last question to ask myself is how do I need my result to look like? I could want a dictionary for when I need the data to be easily accessible. I could want a string for when I need the data to be in a standardized compact form, or I could want Unix time. Unix time is an integer that is equal to the number of seconds that have elapsed since the 1st of January 1970. This is very useful because it's easy to store, easy to parse and easy to calculate with. Now, depending on the answers to those questions, you can very easily decide which methods to use. For example, if I wanted to get the date and time as a dictionary in the UTC standard, then I'd do get date time dict from system and for the UTC parameter, I just write true. Now, let's say that we have the time and we just want to convert it to another format. Well, that's going to be even easier because you just need to know the format you have, the format you want, and again, if you want the date, the time, or both. All right, but it's time to see this in practice. Oh, I just realized that I could have made this video for Valentine's Day and have had it called how to get a date in Godot. <laughs> okay, now let us see this in practice. First of all, what I have here is a scene which contains a bunch of nodes that for the sake of simplicity are being put into different groups. Now, what I want to do is to only show the elements that are in the day group during real life daytime and to only show elements that are in the night group during real life nighttime and also to show elements based on season. For example, uh, this pumpkin should only be seen during autumn. Now, let's see how we do that. If we now take a look at the code, you'll see that I have already added every element that's in a given group to a separate array, and what I want to do is to update the scene based on time. So in this function, I'm going to get the current time, so I'm going to write var now equals to time dot what. Well, let's ask again our questions. The first question that I'm going to ask is how much information do I actually need? Well, if I want to know if it's day and night, I think it would be enough to only know the hours of the day. However, I also want to know if the season is autumn or something else. So then I might also need the months as well. So I think the best thing to do would be to get the date time. Now, how do I want this date time to be? Well, I want it into a dictionary because it's going to be very easy to pick up only the month or only the hour. So I'm going to write dict. And from where do I want it? I want it from the system. And because I want the player to have the best experience to see light when it's outside for them, I'm going to leave it in local time and not set true for UTC. Okay, so let's make some rules for showing these nodes. What I'm going to do is to simply write a new variable var is day. And this is going to be equal to, I don't know, now.hour is greater than six and now that hour is smaller than, I don't know, maybe 20 or 21, something like that. Let's say that during this time it is day. Now, when it is night, well, var is night is going to be equal not is day, because if it's not day, of course, it's night. Okay, and to check if it's autumn or not, what I'm going to do is to write var is autumn, and this is going to equal to what? Well, it's going to equal to now dot month, and this month has to be larger or equal than the month of September. But how do we get that month? Well, it's easy. We have an enum from time. So I'm just going to write time dot month and dot month September if I can find it. Okay. And now dot month 
Maybe I could put this into a new line. So end now dot month is smaller or equal to time dot month dot November. Okay. So we have these three rules. So what I'm going to do is to simply toggle all the nodes. So I'm just going to write toggle nodes. And first of all, let's take the day nodes. When do we want to toggle the day nodes? Well, when it is day. And we repeat this functionality for the others. So night nodes, it's here when it's night. And autumn nodes are going to be toggled when it is autumn. Okay, that's pretty much all we need. If I now press F5, you'll see that in my scene, it is daytime. And it's daytime because for me, it's 15.07, which is roughly 3 p.m. And I also do not have this pumpkin because it's the 15th of February and it's not autumn. Now, just to make sure that everything works fine, what I'm going to do is to actually adjust the date and time and to set it to something like 23, which is a night time. And if I now press F5, you'll see that it is night in my game. Now, let's see if we can get this pumpkin to show as well. So what I'm gonna do is to adjust the date and time again, but this time let's set it to, I don't know, October and change. And if I now go here, uh, first of all, <laughs> apparently Windows wants me to... Yeah, so Windows, Godot and OBS don't really like me traveling so far into the future, so I will stick to the close present and show you this screenshot of the pumpkin really showing up during October that I managed to do while not recording. Okay, but we have also talked about time conversion. so. Just for the sake of the example, let's say that we wanted to get var now in a string format. And to do that, we are going to simply write time dot what? Well, we know that the previous time was a dictionary. So what we need to do now is to say get date time string from that dictionary. So from date time dict. And you'll see that I have two parameters. First of all, I have the dictionary, which is now. And I also have a use space parameter, which is telling me if I want to use space or I want to use a T between the date and the time. And for use space, I'm going to write false just to show you the T. <laughs> and I'm going to print now string. And if I press F6, you see that I have here uh, the date T and also the time. Now, this format is very useful because we can easily set up a node which shows the time at the top of the player screen. For example, what we could do instead would be to go to our process function and in here I could maybe add something to a label. Okay, but let's make a label first. So I'm just gonna make a new canvas layer. And in this canvas layer, I'm gonna add a control node just so I can make it be the whole region. And in this control node, I'm just gonna add a label and this label is going to be centered. And in here, yeah, you see I could have any kind of text, but I'm just going to leave it like that. Maybe just put this monogram font that has been selected since the beginning of the video. I'm gonna go to theme overrides fonts and in here, let's put monogram and you see it's a prettier font and it looks pretty decent. And now let's also move this up and yeah, let's say that we have a timer that's here. Now, of course, we don't want the timer to say DSA, DSA, whatever. We want the timer to tell the time. So what I'm going to do is to go to the script here, take a reference of our label and in our process, simply say var now string equals to again, time dot get date time, but this time string from system and UTC false, but space, let's set it to true this time because we want to see the space between the date and the time. And what I can do is to simply say label dot text equals to this now string. If I remove this and if I press F5, you'll see that I have the time here and the time is incrementing and I don't have to do anything else to it. It's always going to show the correct time. Not only can we use the dates to update things when the scene is loaded, we could use this time 
in the process, for example, if we wanted to gradually modify some things. For example, what I could do would be to go to the canvas modulate and change its color whenever I'm approaching the day. So I could be moving this up and you see that the scene is no longer as dark as it was before. Now to do that, we simply need to get a reference to our canvas modulate. So just get the reference here. And instead of doing whatever we've been doing here, I'm just going to say var now equals to time dot get date time dict from system. And with this now value, we can get the seconds. So let's just say var seconds. Oh, and by the way, I'm writing seconds because we don't want to stay four hours to see if this works. So I'm just going to say now dot second. Now what we can do is to have a linear interpolation between the color that we have now and white in order to lighten up the scene. So I could just get this canvas modulate dot color and this is going to equal to what? Well it's going to equal to lerp between what value? Well initially the value is 787878 so color of 78 7878 and white, which is color white, And what is the value that we want to lerp this with? Well, we want to lerp this with the seconds. And because this value has to be between zero and one, we are going to divide the seconds with 60.0. It's important that we add 0, 0.0 because if we didn't, all our results would be integers, which would lead us to getting zero every time. And by making this point zero, we're going to get a float result, which is somewhere between zero and one. If I save and if I press F5, you will see that the scene is going to get lighter and lighter. And I will open the clock and speed up the video just to make it obvious. And yeah, whenever it reaches zero seconds again, as you saw, the scene got back to the initial state. We could make it loop more evenly so that it looks better. But for the sake of the example, this is looking pretty good. Now, finally, I think we should also talk about the utility functions that I mentioned before. Let's go into our ready function. And in here, let's test the first one, which is get time zone from system. So if I write print time dot get time zone from system, you'll see that I'm getting some interesting information. I get the bias, which is one to zero, and I get the name of the time zone. Now this one to zero basically means that it's 120 minutes away from the UTC time. This is useful because if I wanted, for example, to build some kind of date string that has the UTC time, but also shows the difference, between the UTC time and my time zone, I could do it by using the next utility function, which is get offset string from offset minutes. So let's just see an example. If I write print time dot get offset string from offset minutes, I could use the minutes that I got here. Maybe let's put all this into a variable. So var minutes offset equals to this thing dot bias. And if I now press F6, you'll see that I get plus 0200. So it means that I'm two hours ahead of UTC. Okay, so now if I know the UTC time, I could build a pretty interesting string with this. So for example, let's just say var UTC time equals to time dot get date time. <laughs> it's, it's a pretty long function, not gonna lie. Get daytime string from system and with UTC set to true. And let's just store this other thing var difference equals to whatever this was. And we could now print UTC time plus difference. And if I press F5, you'll see that I'm getting this very interesting date. It's the UTC time and it shows me that I also have a difference of two hours. Now, the final two functions that I'll show you are going to be very useful in your game developer journey because not only for time, but you can also use them for measuring how much your functions take. Okay, first of all, let's see what those functions are. The first function is time.get 
tixmsec. The second function is time.getTixUsec. Now this is going to return the number of milliseconds that have passed ever since the game has been started, and this is going to return the microseconds. Okay, but let's just discuss the getTixmsec. Maybe let's print it to see what it returns. If I press F6, you see I get 1116. Okay, but if you've paid attention in the video, you might have seen that all this time I've been cheating. Whenever I wanted some kind of outcome out of the game, I simply went to change the date time in my system and I got the outcome that I wanted. So what if you don't want the player to cheat? Well, what you could do would be to always calculate the time based on this moment in which the game has been started. Or another thing that you might do would be to make a separate server which has the correct time and make this game request information from that server. But that's a bit out of scope for this video, so let's just leave it at that. What I want to show you instead is how we can use this function to measure how much something has taken. For example, let's just say that this time get tixmsec is the initial time. So var initial time equals to time get tixmsec. What I can do now is to measure whatever function I want. So let's say that we want to have a for for i in range 1000 we print i and we can now calculate the ticks again. So what I could do is var current i equals to time get ticks m sec. So if I take the difference between these two, I'm going to get print current time minus initial time. And if I press F6, you'll see that this time has been six. So it took six milliseconds to iterate and print 1000 numbers. So yeah, you can use this to see which functions are slowing down your game the most and which functions to make more efficient if there is a need for that. Okay, but that's all. If you liked the video, please subscribe. Thank you for watching. Thanks for my coffee supporter and see you in the next one.